a full understanding of the cost of each capital improvement project per school. So uh, I'd like to thank again Mr. John Fernandez, the superintendent, Mr. Lujan, and counterparts also with you just state Mr. Romero and Mr. Flores. Okay. Uh, Mr. Superintendent, I'd like to invite you to speak first, and then Ms. Hagen just came in, so she, please join us at the table. Thank you. Um, thank you, Vice Speaker. Um, you do have a packet of information that we provided, and so um, what we're going to talk about mainly is uh, what we were able to do as part of the um, feasibility study for the conversion of a, a Chief Brody Memorial Elementary School into a central middle school. Um, so I, I think where this uh, all started was uh, out of our exercise last year when we were revisiting all the attendance areas for the entire uh, public school uh, district. And um, what, we, what we were doing at the time was trying to um, take a look at uh, how we could um, really ensure that kids had an opportunity to, to go to school close to where they lived, uh, to be able to provide for more efficient bus operations, and then uh, try to align the feeder system so that elementary schools uh, all went to one middle school, all went to the, you know, the same high school, so we could start that vertical articulation uh, that we've been uh, always wanting to do. Uh, so in the course of that exercise, we received a, and in your packet you'll find a re resolution passed in March of uh, 2018 by the Tamuning Tumon Harmon Municipal Planning Council requesting that Chief Brody Elementary School be converted into a middle school. Um, at the time, as we were going through the attendance areas, we were realizing some of the challenges that we had with our, our district. Uh, one of them being the fact that most of the population is up north and central, and we were looking at the fact that um, for some of our students up in the, the Tamuning, Harmon, Dededo area, really they were either going to Beneventi Middle School in Dededo, some of them from the Harmon area were going all the way across to Antalon Middle School, and then we had um, the Tamuning, for the, for the most part the Tamuning kids, but also kids from Momototo Mighty and some from Agana Heights and so forth were going down to Jose Rios Middle School in Petey. So there was this really this gap kind of in the center, central part that was, was a missing a middle school and where kids had to kind of go really far away from where they lived to um, attend the sixth to eighth grade. So when we got this, it was good timing. Um, the board decided in the course of implementing the attendance area recommendations that we would do elementary schools this school year that just ended that we would um, do high schools starting the following year, so not this coming school year, but the year after. But for middle schools, we had to solve one issue first, which was to determine whether it was possible to uh, do a central middle school. So this is the reason why, um, it's the reason why we uh, did a feasibility study. We looked at uh, Chief Brody Memorial Elementary School. We did a walkthrough. We identified uh, what changes needed to happen uh, in order to allow that school to be suitable uh, for uh, middle school students. And what you have before you um, is a, is a, a uh, outline of the information that we came up with, as well as a resolution from the board uh, requesting the legislature's assistance in finding out uh, whether there would be funding solutions to this. So ultimately, I guess at the end of the day, uh, the, estimate, uh, the estimated need for resources was roughly uh, $10 million, which is what the request was. Uh, but that includes everything from basic renovations, uh, including restroom renovations, um, you know, the demol demolishing certain structures, upgrading electrical, mechanical work, um, looking at canopy repair, building a new cafeteria dining facility, and then uh, I think probably half of the cost was associated with uh, a new gym facility. So all in all, that added up to $10 million, and uh, you'll have that information uh, before you. So I can stop there and just sort of go with your questions unless you like more information. Uh, but in here you have the site map, uh, you have a delineation of some of the cost estimates, and, uh, and so forth. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Superintendent. Um, yeah, the, so in, in, our, in our conversation, I did uh, inquire the timeliness of the resolution submitted by the board. 
Um, the feas feasibility study was submitted last, last year in 2018, I believe. Was it October? So we uh, presented an, er, er, the first version of it, probably in October, with mm -hmm. the committee, and that was with Mr. Lujan, who heads our committee, as well as um, with the, the mayor, uh, the mayors of both Dededo and Tamuni, who would okay. be affected. And so uh, who was hired to conduct the feasibility study? How is the, how right. is the feasibility study? So we did that in-house. Uh, okay. So Mr. Romero heads our capital improvements project okay. um, work, as well as uh, assisted by Mr. Flores and some of our DOI work. So they generated these estimates based on uh, the projects that we've completed for the department. Right. And so I'm hearing that in the discussion that the main concern was the attendance areas were looked at, and, and that was the push for to convert Chief Brody into a middle school. So Correct. what happens to the elementary school students? Where, where will they go if the conversion happens? So uh, let me turn it over to our deputy uh, who cause was working with the attendance area committee. And Just then so also I, the know. parent, the parents, the stakeholders, are they aware that, you know, have they been, been engaged and do they agree that this is something that should be done, um, especially those that are looking to, I, that are currently in elementary school right now, their, their children are in elementary school, are the parents been informed? Have they given ample time to voice their concerns on the situation? Yes, so I'll answer the second part of that okay. after she's able to. Is the question where will the current students of Chief Brody be yes, attending where, school? Where, how will you distribute the so students at Chief Brody that are currently going to school there? Currently, there's uh, approximately 250 students at Chief Brody, and based on their current attendance areas, they'd be attending either Tamuning Elementary School, Liguan Elementary School, or Juan M. Guerrero Elementary School. And are those schools going to be the feeders into Chief Brody? Or are no. you going to redistrict the no. whole? If you, if, yeah, if Chief Brody's a middle school, what would be the feeder into Chief Brody from the elementary school? What elementary, what is your question? Which okay, elementary so you, schools would feed into Chief Brody yes. as a middle school, predominantly yes. Tamuning Elementary? Just Tamuning Elementary. Abs yes. Okay. So it's a majority of the Tamuning Elementary kids that are going to be shifted from Rios Middle School back into their village of, uh, or their municipality of Tamuning. If, if I could clarify, so currently the Chief Brody Elementary School students, when they go to middle school, most of them go already to Antalan or to Beneventi Correct. based on where they live. Most of them are from Har the Harmon area. And that's one of the challenging areas already. Um, maybe a handful go to Jose Rios. Um, the majority of the students who go to Jose Rios are from Tamuning Elementary School. All of them will go, you know, so there's about 150 probably every year that, uh, that show up in the sixth grade at Jose Rios. And then that's supplemented by students from JQ San Miguel, um, I believe in Ganya Heights and others in Rios. See, for Jose Rios, CL Titano, JQ San Miguel, Ganya Heights Ganya Elementary. Heights and Timuni. So just, just to get a, a clear understanding, right? Uh, if Chief Brody becomes a middle school, and then so Jose Rios is also going to have some changes within their districting as well? Yes. Correct. And so what, what villages what, what are the changes that will be made for the districting for Jose Rios? So right now with Jose Rios, the current, so what we were doing was already planning around a couple of different scenarios, but there are a number of students who currently go to Ganya Heights and Seattle Titano, and I believe the discussion was that they would be able to go to Agata and to um, um, Antalan, depending on, on where they were, either up in the Momototo Mighty area or if it's a Ganya Heights and Seattle Titan, no, they potentially would be able to go to Agada. There is still capacity. So the issue of so the issue what that creates for Jose Rios is that you would still have um, you know the PD students, ASEN students, and so forth that would still go to PD. So the the discussion that we had at the attendance area committee was if we created a central middle school that would then be able to serve those who lived in close proximity. We now are going to become um, basically confronted with the issues that we're going to have throughout the South. Was how do we deal with the lower enrollments down South? So the discussion we had, uh, and if Chief Brody goes forward as a new middle school, we were contemplating uh, planning around a potential K to eight campus. That's something that would have to occur over the coming year. Uh, but that was one of the options that we've been talking about. 
with regard to to uh, Jose Rios in a way that doesn't displace uh, you know those to the students who still live in the area will still have an opportunity to go to uh, a school in close proximity but we'd have to do something to ensure that we can maximize the use of that facility so it would then so instead of being a traditional middle school elementary school the idea was we would think one of the options was consider a k-8 community school as serving uh, that area which you know seems to be pulled in various directions already i think jose rios is the most problematic middle school i think as you know which i think they come in from five different elementary schools and go to four different high schools mm -hmm. so we, you know either any which way we try to solve that problem we're going to be left trying to figure out what do we do to serve those students in that area and the idea was p possibly a k-8 school but again we hadn't gone through further further in the planning process i think where we were were was this was trying to tackle the first issue is it possible to do a conversion for a central middle school what would that cost be mm -hmm. and then after that what would the impacts and what would be the next step to ensure that we deal with the other population that, that would be impacted and left right. uh, in that vicinity okay so so i can't answer definitively but just yeah, to say k8 <laughs> k8 was kind of where we were you know so i think part of this what you're asking about timing is that's that's a good question i think part of the issue was we discussed um, with the committee the costs associated with it you know we're in a fiscal year where the um where we had to cut you know to to maintain uh, our budget in this current fiscal year and so it giving all the funding issues it, it never really rose to the level of a further action uh, by the, the by the board as we were kind of trying to get through the school year so i think at the end of the day we re realized that there were still some outstanding issues that the board had raised and looked at and we were trying to figure out where you know what, what was next so i think the I, I think the board's decision was you know it's a funding issue we don't have the funding internally if we're going to make this happen we're going to have to seek support whether it's with the governor or with the legislature to determine what funding might be available and when yeah, and, so and then th that's where we're at yeah, you're absolutely right um but before we go there because i want to address the 19 million dollars uh that you guys that gdoe was cut and now we're appropriating an additional 4.7 for specific, specifically for Chief Brody Memorial School to be converted into a middle school. But before we go there, I just want to get a very, very clear understanding on what villages are going to feed into Jose Rios Middle School, or perhaps what elementary school will feed into Jose Rios Middle, Jose Rios Middle School, and what elementary school will feed into Chief Brody. Can, I, can we get the, that? information today or because I, I read the resolution and your resolution is asking for 10 million in 10 months right for for that span right so um, about 5.3 million is for a gym and then the 4.7 that we wrote the bill for is for the conversion project right. Right? so so while she's looking that up I'm just yeah just definitely uh, cl to clarify that absolutely 10 million is for the full project um, and 4.7 would be the minimum needed to get the facility up to be able to accommodate middle school students so uh, under that scenario we would be able to do that conversion and open it up for use and then we would then uh, look for you know the remainder of the funding uh, maybe at a future date to support a gym facility so that's right. exactly the way we were looking at it and i think FG, as, you, as you saw the numbers and then uh, in the interim if we were able to operate a middle school uh, it's most likely that we would have to work something out with jfk so um, what would be the cost savings to doe if we convert chief brody into a middle school so i'm not sure about the cost savings i think number one it's it just depends on how we well here's here's my thought process without trying to go too far and stirring up too much discussion because it hasn't been fully thought out mm -hmm. one of the challenges we're having down south is we're having a low to and sometimes low either stable or declining enrollment uh what when we what, what we've done in the past to try to to deal with that is we've pushed populations into those facilities and so what happens with a northern school or central school like tamuni is you've pushed students close you know for, to fill to fill pd pd middle school mm -hmm. and what you see is and my you know both my kids are my my daughter went there my kid my son will be there what you see is that there's a transportation issues that cause parents to have to make certain decisions so we know that we lose a lot of kids who's you know who might have siblings at tamuni who parents don't want to 
their other child to be so far away from home and when they pick them up. So they may end up going to St. Anthony, for instance, or somewhere closer. Uh, we, we know that from the, from the principal, she was just reinforcing um, you know, Ms. Lujan, that parental involvement, participation in after school sports and after school activities becomes an issue because of some of the distance. So we're trying to solve for that, that issue. When we, if we do that, we, we recognize we're gonna pull uh, a majority of the students that were at Rios and we'll be pulling them into the central middle school, which is a benefit to them for the, in terms of proximity, in terms of potential partnerships with JFK as they feed into JFK. But it leaves us with a big question about Jose Rios, which is what you're asking. What we're looking at is in, instead of um, trying to figure out how to support a traditional middle school and traditional elementary school, is looking at building a K-8 model that will enable us to serve the, the, the students in that direct jurisdiction. So when you're asking about what feeds into Jose Rios, if it becomes a K-8 school, um, and I'm asking uh, Deputy Soha you know, Coletta to figure out if I'm wrong here, but I recall the PD, Assen, um, Nimitz Hill areas that, where they're in close proximity would be able to send their K-8 to uh, students to, to that school, and it could serve more as a community school for K-8 to and then would have to feed into a high school, and we have to determine uh, that. So we haven't done the study on, on uh, exactly the final, you know, how that would actually uh, work, except um, but that's the thought process to be able to serve a school in an area with that many students, which is a lower density than normal. I think if we are able to work that out, it'll give us some options for working with other schools down south. I, I think there's been an ongoing concern about lower enrollments, you know, and down further south and, and Ocean View and Marshall Sablon and, you know, in Arahan and how to deal with them. And, and many people have normally gone about saying, well, we should just consolidate them and bring them together. And, and I said, that's really hard because most parents want to have a school close by or, you know, near, near home. And so one of the, the options there is, is to think about uh, if we're going to do any kind of consolidation, it might be keeping the students who live in a certain area together in more of a K-8 school, which you've seen in other jurisdictions, they can go from elementary into middle school in a facility that we can invest in and, and upgrade and make sure it's, it's, it's uh, meeting all their health, safety, and modernization standards. Um, and that might be an option instead of trying to maintain the multiple campuses that are half and you know half filled with students or unable to be fully, you know. So those are the types of thought process that I think this will raise as we uh, consider this proposal. So again, it's not fully, um, you know, we haven't, we didn't, we were looking at whether this would go, f you know, first. And if this does get some support, we would use the next year, and that's what I was discussing with the principal, that you would have a year to kind of plan out how we would move from, you know, and how we would deal with Jose Rios and then be able to inform the community at that point. But that's just, a, that's just the, the thought process we went through up to the, up to the point where they said we need a feasibility study first. Right. And so uh, have the parents and have the stakeholders been made uh, aware? Have, the, have you held uh, town hall meetings perhaps to inform the various stakeholders, especially in the villages, because this seems like it's going to impact maybe from five to eight villages um, when, if and when Chief Brody converts to a middle school. Right, so, so the majority of the stakeholders who would be impacted, well, there's several. I would say that, first of all, obviously the, you know, Because you're doing redistricting for it's, Jose it's, Rios, and you're doing redistricting it's multiple. for, yes, so I think you need to. Right, so for the attendance area, area, right, so the attendance area discussions definitely, and this was over the last year, mm -hmm. is where we went through and we worked out, we went to uh, various community meetings and, and explained the differences and the changes. Um, and so I think generally, yes, uh, we've, we've had those discussions. And, um, but the issue about chief, about this particular yeah, chief conversion uh, has not been as extensive. So we, we do know that the support from the Tamuni, Tamuni Municipal Planning Council is there. Uh, I know that um, just anecdotally that a lot of parents at Tamuni uh, would probably be supportive of this. Yeah. The, the issue is uh, we have not yet gone, because we, we never reached this point, gone out and clarified uh, beyond our attendance area meetings that we had last year. Uh, the, the impact for uh, current students. So, you know, if this goes forward, we would have to incorporate into the planning for the school year uh, the, you know, how we update the, the students and parents of the current facility. Most of those parents and students do come from the Harmon area. Um, and so I think the issue about where they go to school 
um, from the standpoint of, you know, as an observer, you know, closer to where they live is, is, is one benefit. Uh, we know that when they had parent meetings, they would hold it at the Harmon McDonald's just because it's closer. So we, we're hoping that, that we can continue that discussion, but we haven't had any recent uh, meetings with the parents. I know, um, they, I know that we've talked to the principal and I know the teachers are aware because they've gone through the walkthroughs, but they're probably not up to date. I would say that your question about timeliness really uh, came down to our discussion with the board about what do we do with this information since we know there's a cost, right. we don't have money. Um, and so it seems I think like we're moving really fast to, to get this school up and running to be a middle school. And so my concern is that we do this and then we don't hear uh, the community's input, you know, their voice on, on the impact that it's how it's going to affect Correct. them. So, uh, and also my concern is we have a $19 million cut here at GDOE and then somehow we magically found 4.7 million to fund um, right. Chief Brody to be converted into middle school. Can this money be used in other schools for other capital improvement projects or capital outlay? Right. And so, I mean, if that's the case, then, I mean, perhaps we can weigh something here and, and see because uh, I, I don't like moving so fast and then we leave the community behind and then they're like, what happened? <clears throat> How, right. How's the school trans transforming into a middle school? We didn't know about it, right? right? Yes, it's in the news perhaps sometimes and it's on a radio talk show, you know, right. that's there. But really, I, I think that uh, to really get the community engaged, we have to bring it to them outside platforms of social media and various types right. of media. It usually is there a one-to-one -on -one kind of community. I think that's how Guam still right. is. I, I wouldn't um, be opposed to that. I, I, think, I, th I think the issue for us is um, uh, I think the board didn't want to sit on it and said, you know, we, we know there's a cost issue. We know we have to discuss this and they brought it here. Right. I I'm definitely uh, understand that, you know, from where you stand, having this and looking at the resources and trying to weigh that probably would merit uh, more community conversation. And, we, and we've always been a department that that yeah. values that. And, and so it's not, you know, I don't know that we knew what to expect when this came to the legislature, where there would, whether there would or would not be resources. I think it was part of it was to get in line and say, look, if there are available resources, here's one of our priorities. Now, if this is, I mean, we would definitely be um, you know, willing and able to, to handle, you know, either on our end or through the public hearing process here, uh, that type of discussion. Yes. So, yes. and I mean, we're not shying if away from could, that. Okay. I think part of it is just kind of understanding the process, uh, the support for it, whether there are resources that might be considered, and then being able to participate in that discussion. But we definitely would, you know, appreciate your attention and uh, willingness to, to give this a look because it is something that the board had been holding, trying to figure out how we maneuver. And we just decided we're not coming up with any new resources inside the department. So right. let's get in line and see if anything does happen and resources get freed up, then this is one of the priorities we wanted to share. Okay. And, you know, perhaps also like the cost savings approach, like is this going to save DOE money or is it going to cost DOE, you know, if, okay. is this going to cost, cost them more to run the school? And then the transition from Jose Rios, um, it looks like either your uh, the enrollment is low at Jose Rios or you're looking to build on Jose Rios property to expand it for the right. future plan of K through eight. So I, you know, I'm just trying to, we're here today to get a, you know, a, to talk about it and to open up right. the So the I'm happy to, to develop that response a little bit yeah. more in detail so we understand that. And for us, again, you know, this has been kind of on hold because of the resource issues yeah, and it's something we've been keeping in abeyance. But uh, it's, it, we do have our thoughts and we can run the analysis so you're clearer on, on how this would work. I mean, I think part of the, so if I'm a member of the public, what I'm going to want to know is, you know, if there is money made available, what's next? And I think yeah. for us, uh, that's also the question when and, and, you know, when and how much would be available. But Can our- I want to caution you, Mr. Superintendent, just because we found this money, uh, right. it's not always going to be the case, right? So, so no, please right. don't throw out uh, more capital improvement projects where you're going oh, to right. expand K through eight and it's going to cost another thirty million dollars, and we have to find that too. Right. You know, the the pressure of the community. There's also political pressure to right. support DOE, but I want to also be practical and reasonable on our approaches. Right. right. So I think you know. So I think you know. And again, we also don't want to mix our messages. So right. you know. So for you know, not only at this but other meetings, we'll continue to say because it is true. That yeah. Simon Sanchez is, is came first. Right. We're working on Simon Sanchez, um, just for as a matter of, of, of uh, updating the. You know, we we move forward with the land surveying services that's ongoing. We expect that to uh, to complete this summer. 
We just met uh, as an evaluation committee to talk about the next step, uh, which we hope will lead us into the design phase and trying to make sure there's no gap, you know, as small a gap as possible. So we expect that to move forward during the summer. So anyone saying that, you know, the, the legislature is looking at a different project already, that's not the case. We are continuing to move and prioritize Simon Sanchez. It just happens to be under a different process, under a different type of funding. And we, and we are uh, prepared to move forward and do believe we have uh, sufficient resources at this point to keep it moving. So this is, is uh, this has gone through a, a, you know, a lengthy process of having, you know, thought process and prioritization, so it is before you, uh, but we don't intend to, um, you know, to come and bring every capital project to your attention in that manner. Okay. Um, our effort really is to see if we can at some point work out some kind of dedicated funding for facilities that we can depend on and then, you Something know, in the long run? do the, you know, <laughs> put together the planning around it and then prioritize so it's more of a thoughtful, long-term uh, uh, process that, that people can depend on. Yes, but, uh, so but we're happy to provide a response as to, I mean, if, if I get it just for our notes, the question is, um, number one, sort of the cost savings analysis around uh, the implementation of a new middle school, as well as the impacts on, uh, on Jose Rios um, what if, a, if a middle school were to be converted. Okay. And then, um, yeah, because we were, when, when Chief Brody, the, bill, uh, the resolution that the board presented, uh, just last week right. uh, to the legislature. Uh, we are looking up other capital improvement projects or capital outlay projects for, you know, not only Simon Sanchez, because right. that, that was my concern. It's like, how are we pushing this conversion? What's driving this Chief Brody Memorial conversion? Is there a cost savings here that can be, ref you know, funneled to build Simon Sanchez? What is the road drive? Right. And if right. it's attendance, then, okay, uh, you know, perhaps there's, maybe something a little bit more. And then I was thinking about all the other schools like Ocean View, um, right. George Washington High School that, you know, some of their issues that they're having there and uh, Southern High School with their gym issues and their, because it's such a huge campus and it's, un, you know, it's, the enrollment rate is extremely low to fill up those campuses. So I'm just wondering, um, could, could this money be spent elsewhere in, in the, many CIPs that have been on hold uh, to other schools. And then, you know, perhaps if the community was vetted for this conversion, because like, it seems like five, five to eight districts are going to be impacted. I, I, I hope, you know. Right. So I, I, think, I, I just want to make sure we do okay. everything so, before we So push probably that out. instead of trying to kind of walk through just my concept, we can put it on paper as to how, um, how Jose Rios would be impacted in our thought process right. uh, going forward. Um, and then maybe that will help us with understanding how, how to move this forward um, right. in light of that. Yes, because I, I understand that perhaps yeah. there's a concern because a lot of parents that, I know a lot of parents go out of their way to probably relocate just so that they meet the uh, requirements to be into that district to go to Jose Rios. Right. And so I, I know that that's a very good school, so parents really try to push their students there, right. or their children there. So, uh, you know, I'm just like, you know, I think we need to engage the community more. But Absolutely. Um, okay. we want to move forward. It's just perhaps we can op open up another discussion about the capital improvement projects at a later date and make it sure. a more of a round table discussion. I wanted to move quickly on this. That's why it's an informal meeting, right. but it's still being recorded and, and put up on our YouTube site because we didn't uh, meet the five day notice requirement. Sure. So this is just very informal just to kind of, you know, massage it a little bit and then we can move forward with the public hearing and or round table discussion and then a public hearing. Um, Absolutely, and, so and we can and get that, the feeder schools. Uh, and this line you know, of questions will help us prepare right. for the, to give you all the information needed. Okay. No, we, we, are, we always welcome a public discussion, and we've done so for many of our projects. Right. Um, you know, just in light of all the resources or the lack of resources, it becomes hard when, the, when you have these discussions and we're not sure how to move forward. So we appreciate the guidance uh, and how we want to engage the community. Uh, we're happy to talk about the benefits and the costs, and then uh, likewise the impacts on the other uh, parts of the of the, of the island that this might um, create a domino effect for. Right, yeah. And okay. then we'll share that and happy to talk to the, you know, publicly. We also, you know, we also admit we do have some internal uh, discussions as well. The board was really moved quickly to make sure this was, um, you know, put in line for any available resources, but we all, we, you know, we do have all our internal communications uh, piece that we also will normally put out anyways to update uh, the community about what's being discussed as well. So we'll do that in tandem with all you. Right. 
Thank you, and okay. uh, I want to thank the, the board for their hard work and their due diligence. I know you, I, I guess I understand now the timeliness of this um, resolution. Uh, my concern was it was done in 2018. Why didn't we react in 2018 or write a resolution? But I understand now, it, especially perhaps because of the cuts that we were experiencing. And um, I, I don't feel good that GDOE has cut $19 million, but right. if we can find a way to uh, lower that uh, cu cut right. rate, then I, I, I absolutely welcome it. Well, one of the and opportunities I think that we were thinking as well is, I, you know, I know we're getting towards trying to finalize the budget. I know we get into a section where there's where section 30 funds might become available or or revenues came in in a different you know we're not really privy to all of that but we're just hoping that if Neither this was <laughs> right so if this was in the mix as part of the discussion right, that yeah. if resources were made available this could at least be considered yes it's and so it's challenging also for us at the legislature because we don't get to see the real-time cash right right and so it's so we're hopeful the, yeah, we're optimistic yeah. and this is why we're, right, we're, we're yeah. hoping for and so i mean uh the appropriations chair was was uh, very, um, I guess, very gracious, right, to to be able to work with us. He he wants to see DOE succeed. He wants his, you know, his forefront also is education, and right. so he's he has a lot of concern for edu education. So I'd like to thank him for his support. But really, we don't, un as a, as a normal member, we don't get to see the real flow of cash. Okay, right. And so, so. Um, there are a lot of things that impact that but that's you know well, what we can also do for you uh, just to give you uh, also an, an, as you communicate with in, interested stakeholders is uh, give you an updated list of some of the or wherever some of the other facilities projects are because right. as you know uh, we have some canopy we, we get some of the DOI right. funding to support some of the work so trying to address some long-standing canopy issues and electrical issues and other things that are ongoing so at least we'll get a fuller picture of, of that effort Yes, and then if we can transition into solar, we won't have you won't have to have such a high utilities right. bill, right? Right. So, so your support in getting that it would be absolutely yes. so solar, um, and I, as well as I know that we're doing this, the school safety partnerships, and even though it's not a um, structural issue, we, I, I think there was some uh, there was a commitment by the governor as well towards trying to get funding for the intercom systems, right. which were part of you know part of the facilities, but also a safety measure. So yes, the, we'll the, try the, to the put that in a piece teachers. of paper that you can see you know, all together what, what efforts are being funded on, uh, you know, currently. Okay, thank you so okay. much. So right. I'll just, uh, we've, Mr. Lujan, did you want to say something? I saw you, uh, okay. Well, thank you, Senator, for inviting us um, uh, to this meeting for uh, further clarification and understanding. Yeah, a lot of the projects that we've been pushing towards your desk have been, you know, in study for, for a while. Uh, just like our budgets, when we ask for, for money for, for uh, the renovations of our, our school, you mentioned some of the schools. You know, the question is, if, if that keeps getting put back, then how, we are, how are we addressing it as a board? We, we, we found a way. Uh, we found a way to, to, to move it up, move it forward. The, the, the question now is, 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 what is the legislature, the governor, going to do? You know, I, I, I'm looking forward to... Uh, uh, the Department of Education working with with your uh, committee to uh, to timeline those issues. You know, we already know that GW needs some renovation. Maybe we can uh, throw some money identified in an upcoming school year uh, or upcoming uh, fiscal year, things like that. I think I think people are wanting to know a timeline more than anything. And and with us, that's what we try to do. We we we've gone out to the community. Uh, with a lot of our projects, with the movement of, of students, relocating students in, into their, uh, uh, closest to their home. We, we, we went on to community and we're gonna continue to do that. That's what drives our motive as the board. We, we don't have any authority over, over, over the purse, but you guys do. But the best thing we can do is start identifying what needs to be done and put it on your desk so that, so that you'll be able to, to, to see, you know, what, what's happening. Uh, with the uh, Brody uh, plan, that has been a push for over 30 years, uh, according to the mayor. So, I mean, I think it's time now to say, okay, that it's, it's been under use. Brody has been under use, uh, and we saw an avenue to I don't think it's moving, been a push uh, for over 30 years, but I think well, it I'm has just been gonna, a I'm push. I'm just relating uh, yeah. to, to what, uh, <laughs> what they say uh, in that respect. I'm not from that village. I know, but we have to be transparent but, when we speak yes. of these things. Okay. Well, you know, uh, but we saw a plan to, to, to move. It, of course, it's going to be a domino effect when we start moving into that. 
we're looking at how we can solve the overcrowdedness in, in the other schools. Um, an idea of the K through eight might be uh, something uh, that would be uh, a move that we, we may do uh, if, we, if we were to turn Brody into middle school and actually uh, get uh, uh, Rios uh, moving into the direction of the middle of uh, a K through eight. It may free up space elsewhere where we can see in the south where there's, uh, the, the population is not so great that may work and those extra buildings maybe, uh, you know, it would be more beneficial, it would be used more sensible. And then to the north, there are more elementary schools than there are middle schools. If we went, you know, the thought process right now is, is by, by, by doing these activities that we're doing now, you know, it would affect change for the other areas. Now, if we really get down into our study and, and figure out if we change certain middle, uh, elementary schools into a, a, a K through eight, it might just some of, uh, solve some of the overcrowding in, in, in the north, you know. Um, is it, more, is it uh, cost uh, benefit, beneficial to, to the plan? Well, let, let's look, look at building a new school versus uh, the, the one that we're doing now that's existing. I mean, we, we can uh, pick and choose what are the priorities with renovation and, and, and uh, what type of uh, uh, building, we, a new building we want to build. You know, I, I'm, I'm suggesting to the board, since I, I don't know about land, land issue is gonna be the hardest thing to do in, as we get uh, into the villages. Uh, so that's one thing that's gonna, that, that's cost savings, because now we, we have a structure there. So we save on buying land or, or, or trying to requisition one, you know. Uh, two, we, 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 we gotta look at the facility itself or, or the, the uh, population moving into that area. Um, is it wise to uh, build another school or maybe improve that school? We've been going, expanding laterally, building classrooms, uh, whereas all over the world, they're starting to build them upward. You know, there's more accommodation to do that, that which would probably be a, a cost savings. But when you build a new building, you're not gonna build eight classrooms flat, you're gonna build, you know, a structure that's gonna have eight classrooms high. So the consolidation of space is, is there again. So there, there's a lot of things that we look at before we, 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 we do things. And it's glad that we have our, our, uh, our uh, fiscal planners to, to help us do that, you know. Thank you, Thank Mr. Lohan. You know, and, and you said that you've been bringing this out to the community. And uh, we're hearing that earlier that we need to really bring the community along. So what are some of the efforts that you've done to, to those schools, for those schools for, that are going to be impacted through this conversion? You said you brought it out to the community. How did you bring it out to the community? Well, first of did all, you we, 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 uh, we, we, we approached the mayors, of course. The, the okay. mayors went in on it. So what about it, the it stakeholders, was the parents? Now, that, that, that's something that uh, right. I think we've either done a few or and we're, we we're, need we're, to we're do. moving uh, we need to on, do. On, 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 on it. That's why we're but, here, uh, because we need to do that. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Luan. Okay, um, Mr. Romero, Mr. Flores, do you have anything? No? All right, I'd like to thank all of you, Mr. Superintendent. Thank you for being so gracious to meeting here today. And uh, we'd like to move forward to discuss more of these uh, capital improvement projects and perhaps the impact on the feeder schools through these specific districts. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, this pretty much exhausts us, ex our schedule, our agenda for today. And it's now 1-11, so have a good day and God bless. Thank you.